welcome! Welcome to the opening ceremony of the third International Economics Olympiad, an important happening for many of those who are interested in economics, business and finance. My name is Stanislav and I'm on the host of today's live broadcast. Nice to meet you all! We have all been waiting for this for quite some time and now I'm happy to get the main competition of the year started. This time it has a format of an online event, and this is a novelty. Ex everything else uh, too is traditional. As in previous years, the Olympiad gathers hundreds of promising high school students from all over the world who have already proved that they are the best. And the following week will help us to find out who are the best of the best. Uh, please, don't be shy, mark your presence, write about your feelings in our chat, share your thoughts, say hi to other participants, uh, turn on your web cameras and wave your hands if you would like to do this. It, it is great to not only know that you are here today, but also to see your smiles and read your messages. You could start right now from greeting to New Zealand, right now they have about the midnight uh, and uh, I hope our support will help them. In 2020, we have have the honor to name Kazakhstan as the host of the Olympiad. Have you been to this country? If so, be sure to write in our chat about your experience. But if you don't know much about this interesting country, don't worry, together we are going to fix it right now. In order to do this, we are starting an interactive test. Various questions about Kazakhstan with three answer options will be appearing on this very page for the next hour, replacing each other from the time to time. Don't miss the opportunity and try to answer them all. Remember, even the wrong answers increase your knowledge. And by the end of this ceremony, we all will learn something new about the history, culture and nature of Kazakhstan. Do not uh, go away, wait for the test results. We will count all your answers, most of which I'm absolutely sure will be correct. Your participation is important for us. And now we're ready to start with the first question. Al-Farabi, a renowned philosopher and scientist, was born in the territory of today's Kazakhstan. What is the year of his birth? We have four options for you. 1057, uh, 56, 870, uh, 1214 and 960. Please choose the right option. Uh, try to guess or try to uh, put the right answer. And also, of course, more interesting details about the Olympiad, its organi organizers. And participants will be waiting for you within the following hour and a half. So, while you're writing, right now we are ready to go further and you already had a chance to become familiar with the program of the Olympiad via email. In addition, you can always take a look at its schedule on the IEO website 2020.acolymp.org. Despite the online format, this year's Olympiad will be traditionally transparent and fair and fun, for sure. Apart from uh, the free competition rounds, there will be guest lectures and lots of opportunities to socialize, interact and make new friends, of course. Just be active and use those opportunities. Now, it is my pleasure to turn it over to Dmitry Fedorovich, the president of the Olympiad, uh, a man who inspired and created this event. Uh, it is uh, Daniel who made this all possible. Let's him, uh, give him a round of applause and uh, direct our attention to his welcoming statement. Daniel, we are glad to see you here. Thank you very much for a great job you did before the Olympiad. And now I give you the floor. Thank you very much, Stas. And thank you all for coming. I welcome you at this very strange International Economics Olympiad, which is online this year. 13 months ago, we were in St. Petersburg at the second I.O., I.O. 2019. And we were looking forward to I.O. 2020, and we were expecting that by now we will be in Kazakhstan, in the capital of this beautiful country, uh, with the help of our partners, Astana International Financial Center. Uh, those of you who were there remember that this was a very exciting moment, a very exciting event uh, in St. Petersburg. The world has changed a lot since then. Even half a year ago, six months ago, I thought that maybe we can do this in Kazakhstan. Well, four months ago it was unlikely and three months ago it was impossible. So this is all very strange and um, this is all 
completely new for most of, um, for, of us and of you as well. It was hard to make this decision, not to say to realize it. And I'm really glad that we are making this ambitious effort. And I'm really glad that all of you have made ambitious efforts uh, in your journey here, in a virtual journey here. I thank all the national organizers who managed to conduct national selection in these difficult times. Many plans were disrupted, but many countries, and including several new ones, are with us anyway. I also want to address the national organizers in the countries who didn't manage to conduct their national selection this year and thus their teams are not present at least in the main track. Maybe they're present in the open track. Uh, but anyway, I thank everyone for their efforts. I know that you're watching. I'm sure that we will continue our cooperation next year uh, and I'm really hopeful that starting next year the world, be, the world will be well more normal than it is now. Uh, the coronavirus made many people think that it's so easy to disrupt the world. It's so easy to make it separate. It's so easy to make countries distance from each other. But I think the projects like the International Economics Olympiad should be aimed at making the world more united. So this is the main goal of all efforts we have made and are making right now this year, that despite of all difficulties, despite of all challenges that the world is facing and each and every country is facing right now, we are trying to make the world united again and even more united than it used to be. So again, thank you all for coming. I'm really looking forward to the competition. I wish all the contestants good luck and I wish all of us to overcome all the difficulties which we are facing now. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. You did a great job to make this Olympiad in a new online format real and the only thing we would like to wish you good luck. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. See you again in the, uh, our opening ceremony. And before we continue, and there are lots of surprises on our way, let me remind you about our ongoing Kazakhstan Dam test. Its second question has just appeared on your screen. If you are in the full screen mode now, you have to exit in uh, it uh, in order to see the question. Don't miss the chance to give your answer. And the second question is... There is an image of a bird on the flag of Kazakhstan. Which one? Pelican, white stork, eagle or night heron? Just try to guess or just try to show us your knowledge about Kazakhstan culture and flag especially, particularly. And we have a number of very special guests, of course, with us today. And I'm happy to announce the first of them right now, live on your screen, a professor at Harvard University and the laureate of the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Science, Eric Maskin. Yes, yes. We are really yes. glad to see you in be our ceremony. Soon. Okay. The, yeah, the host will introduce and then they will connect you, connect you to the broadcast translation. Okay. Yes. Okay. So this is a waiting room. So Eric here, uh, if you if you can hear us, uh, first of all, of course, we are glad to see you in our ceremony and uh, give you the floor. Well, I'm. I'm very happy to be with you. Can, can you hear me right now? Uh, excellent. Okay, well, uh, I'd like to uh, just say a couple words of welcome to all the participants. Let me begin by observing that Karl Marx and I don't agree about everything when it comes to economics, but one thing that we that we do agree about is that economics is at the very foundation of society. And for a society to work well, its economy must work well. And our subject, the subject economics, is the subject that enables us to understand what it takes for economies to work well. Uh, this, it's particularly important at a time like this, at, uh, in the midst of a world pandemic, because as we're, as we're seeing, 
uh, economies in many parts of the world are not working well. And furthermore, they really cannot be expected to work well all by themselves. They need some help. And economics can bring that help. Uh, at a time like this, for example, we can't rely on markets alone. Uh, for fighting the pandemic, we need all sorts of goods that are not normally provided. We need testing kits. We need protective equipment. We need vaccines. All of these are, are goods that we can't rely purely on markets for. We need to marshal the, the forces of, of our governments to uh, get these goods produced and get these goods distributed. But to do that well takes some um, skill. And it, it's our subject, economics, which teaches us the skills uh, needed to supplement markets at a time of an emergency. So the, the, the very fact that you're here today uh, participating in this Olympiad is a good sign. It means that you, that you have uh, a real interest in economics. I hope that in the course of this week, that interest deepens uh, because our subject needs people like you, the young people of the world, uh, to continue to create a foundation for society. So good luck this week, and thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eric, for your participation in our opening ceremony. And by the way, after the opening ceremony, you will be able to watch the new Eric Maskin lecture on blockchain, its advantages and drawbacks. Don't miss it. And we're going on with the uh, next special guest, Mark Uzan, uh, Executive Director and Founder of Reinventing Bretton Woods Committee, who wants to address uh, to the contestant, uh, Mark Uzan, please... Uh, if we could uh, see you on the screen, we will glad to. Mark, hello, can you hear us? Oh, it's, it's great because we are, okay, we can hear you as well. Please welcome, uh, we'll be glad to give you a floor. Oh, thank you and uh, good afternoon or good morning, depending where you are. It's a great pleasure for me to, um, to join and to give you some uh, welcoming uh, remark for this opening of the uh, Olympiad. First, uh, I congratulate the organizer for making this event possible, even in a digital format. Because as you mentioned in your remarks, this is not a normal time. This is unprecedented. This is something that we never witnessed before. And if you are young and um, open to imagination, it's very hard to be confined. It's very hard to deal with lockdown. It's very hard to think that your life at this moment has been impended by this uh, pandemic that maybe in our lifetimes will be remembered maybe as a game changer for the global economy. You are the Olympiad of international economics. It means that you care about the interactions among countries, the interactions among people, and the capacity that trade is a driver for growth. So when you, whatever you are going to do in your life, you have to think and you have to create and to imagine the world of tomorrow, thinking that what we are witnessing today is going to be a landmark, not about the fact that the global economy will be going backwards, 
is maybe also an opportunity for you as a new generation, as the one who are going to study economics, that we need to find a balance between people, between our environment, and between our capacity to create, because we are going to magnify the trends that were already there before COVID-19, meaning the digitalization of the economy, meaning our capacity you know, to create a better world, and of course, to try to reinvent ourselves because what this pandemic is all about is to send us a signal for opportunities, for the opportunities of you, young generation who are studying economics, that you cannot see the world today being confined or being in lockdown, but think about that in the medium term, when we will find a vaccine or treatment, you will have a lot of opportunities really to think about topics that our generation didn't think in terms of economics. International economics is all about inter interactions. This is something that we cannot do today as I'm speaking on a video and I'm not able to meet any of you, either yourself, because you are watching this video also. But I think this is a great challenge today to study international economics. This is a great challenge today to do something for your country to do something for making and to improve your country. Because at the end, what Professor Maskin said, you know, the eco economics is the foundation of society. We have been dealing with economic inactivity for two months in a lot of countries around the world. Meaning that we were like Robinson Crusoe. We were not doing anything and we were like alone in our own island. And we realized that's how difficult because we are human beings. We are social animals. And I know that this is very difficult for this young generation, for you not to be able to interact, not being able to be able to discuss with your professor, maybe challenge of our times. But like everything else, we need to be resilient. We need to overcome this challenge and this challenge cannot be do done by uh, isolated. And I hope that when we meet again, maybe hopefully face to face, that this inspiration of this Olympiad can allow every one of you to think that the world has also potential as opportunities. Despite the gloomy side of the world today, crisis, climate change, look at also that we can also overcome the frontiers, we can overcome borders. And international economics, as I mentioned before, is all about these interactions. Yes, let's overcome borders, let's overcome difficulties. The virus is global, but our creativity and our imagination has no limit. So I look forward for this International Economics Olympiad for your imagination, for your creativity, because you have the generations who will drive the world for better futures and hopefully for better health for, for all of us. Thank you very much. And I look forward to speaking with you again, hopefully tomorrow. Thanks. Thank you very much, Mark, for your inspirational speech. And we hope to that our meeting, face-to-face uh, -face meeting, not so far as it could seem, and we will glad to see you again online and offline. Uh, yeah, we don't care, actually. So thank you very much, Mark, and we are going on. We have one more address from the USA, now from Harvard. It's hard to find an economist who hasn't studied his textbooks, and probably most of our contestants have read these textbooks as well. Gregory Mankiw. Hello to the International Economics Olympiad. My name is Greg Mankiw. I'm an economist at Harvard University, and I bet a few of you have read uh, one or more of my textbooks. This is a great time to be an economist, a lot of difficult things are going on around the world, but economics can contribute a lot to helping solve the world's problems. So thank you for participating in this activity and good luck. Thank you very much, Gregory. It was Gregory Mankiw. And uh, the International Economics Olympiad was initiated in 2018 by the High School of Economics, one of the leading Russian universities. It is the major permanent partner of the Olympiad, which supports and powers the event since the beginning. Yaroslav Kuzminov, director of the HCE University, has something to say to us all, and although he is not able to connect to the ceremony in real time, we have a special video greeting for, from him. Let's watch it. Добрый день, дорогие участники Олимпиады. Я поздравляю вас с важным событием, 
стартом Международной Олимпиады по экономике. Пройти национальный отбор и принять участие в финале – это большая честь и большая ответственность за всю вашу страну. И сегодня здесь собрались по определению лучшие из лучших те школьники, которые выбрали экономику предметом своего увлечения, выбрали экономику предметом своего профессионального интереса сейчас и уверен в будущем многие из вас. То, что Олимпиада проводится уже третий год, количество ее участников постоянно растет, доказывает, что экономические законы универсальны, несмотря на различия в экономической политике и вообще в политике разных стран. И мы гордимся, что именно Высшая школа экономики выступила инициатором проведения Олимпиады в 2018 году. В этом году Олимпиада проходит в необычном формате, но от этого она не перестанет быть увлекательной, главное честной. Вызовы пандемии не помешали многим странам провести национальный отбор, найти форматы, которые обеспечат справедливые результаты и безопасность участников. 2020 год уже научил нас, что добиваются успеха те, кто может быстро и эффективно отвечать на неожиданные вызовы, стрелять черных лебедей, которые у нас залетают перед нами. И прошу вас не забывать об этом ни во время Олимпиады, ни после. Уверен, что мы переживем пандемию и что мы выйдем из нее более умными и более эффективными, чем мы были раньше. Успехов вам! Ярослав Кузьминов, директор HSE University. Thank you very much for participation in the opening ceremony. As you all already know, the hosting country of the Olympia this year is Kazakhstan. It is the birthplace of a renowned philosopher and scientist Al-Farabi. For ages he was and still is a symbol of a wide perspective of the world and deep understanding of life in a broad sense. Nowadays, Our world is rather complicated and the modern uh, financial sphere is no exception. It requires a lot of knowledge, number of very special skills, the ability to draw conclusions, the courage to think outside the box and again a deep understanding of various processes. This Olympiad is intended to help you sharpen your skills, clarify your goals, enrich your experiences and broaden your perspectives. May the force of reason be with you. And the opening ceremony of the third International Economics Olympiad continues, as well as our interactive test. It is third question is on your screen right now. Do not miss it. And this third question is about, of course, population. Which city of Kazakhstan is the third largest by population? Atrau, Aktobe, Shymkent or Kostanai? We have four options for you as usual, and you could choose just one. While you are choosing the right answer, let me remind you about the new Eric Maskin lecture, which, uh, which will await you right after this ceremony. Its title is On Blockchain, Its Advantages and Drawbacks, and it will begin at 2 p.m. Uh, do not miss this, the opportunity is really unique. So, where are going on? The hosting organization of the third International Economics Olympiad is the Astana International Financial Center. The Astana International Financial Center is a financial hub that plays a pivotal role in positioning itself as a global center for business and finance connecting the economies of Central Asia, the Caucasus, EA, EU, West China, Mongolia, Middle East and Europe. The AIFC is a unique hub on the map of the financial world that brings together the best practices and opportunities offered by similar institutions around the globe, from New York City and London to Dubai, Hong Kong and Singapore. The AIFC creates new opportunities for investors by offering securities of state-owned and private sector issues from Kazakhstan and other countries in the region, as well as business uh, uh, projects from large-scale initiatives such as uh, the Belt and Road Initiative to start up and business by providing access to investors, including major international and regional financial institutions, as well as asset managers and Islamic finance institutions. Well, 
it is said a picture is worth a thousand words. So let's watch a short video presentation that allows you to learn more about the Astana International Financial Center. The Astana International Financial Center is a unique project created by Elbasi. Its goal is to make Kazakhstan's economy stronger and its citizens richer. The AIFC was launched in 2015 as part of the 100 Steps Nation Plan. From the very first days, the AIFC enlisted the support of major global players. The members of the AIFC Management Board are Dr. Jacob Frankel, Dr. Bandar Hajar, Satsuma Chakrabarti, German Griff, Arkady Volosh and Julie Monaco. The AIFC partners include Goldman Sachs, Shanghai Stock Exchange, Silk Road Fund, Nasdaq, Bloomberg, the heads of the AIFC bodies are world-famous specialists Bord Wolf, Lady Judge, Barbara Doman, Tim Bennett. The AIFC Committee for Regulation of Financial Services is engaged in creating a comfortable regulatory environment for the centre participants. The independent courts and the International Arbitration Center reliably protect the interests of the AIFC participants. In 2019, the court examined the first case, launched pro bono office. AIFC legislation is 45 acts of general application and 28 acts of financial services, developed with the assistance of the best lawyers in the world. The AIFC Stock Exchange listed 24 securities, including shares of the national company Kazatomprom and the Russian mining company Polymetal. In February 2019, the AIFC Exchange received the status of recognized from the Royal Tax and Customs Service of Great Britain. The AIFC Exchange is an ideal platform for pairing the Belt and Road Initiative and the Eurasian Economic Union. The AIFC also focuses on fintech, Islamic finance and green finance. The AIFC Bureau for Continuing Professional Development trains and certifies financial professionals. More than 2,000 people are already graduates of the Bureau. Unique online services launched. E-Residence allows you to remotely register with the AIFC. E-Justice gives you the opportunity to consider lawsuits online from anywhere in the world. Expat Center, providing registration and escort services, allows expats to feel at home in Kazakhstan. Welcome to the AIFC. And with the great pleasure, we would like to welcome in our opening ceremony Deputy Chairman of the Astana International Financial Center Authority, Yurnur Rismagametov. Yurnur, hello and welcome. Hello, can you hear me well? Yeah, absolutely great. Mm -hmm. uh, dear students, uh, dear team leaders, uh, dear speakers, uh, first of all, uh, on behalf of the, uh, the country of Kazakhstan, the city of Nur Sultan and the Astana International Financial Center, uh, I would like to welcome you all uh, to the International Economics Olympiad of the year 2020. Very happy to be a part of this great initiative. Uh, secondly, um, uh, most people uh, know me from the, as a financier in Kazakhstan and regionally uh, uh, because I've been working for the financial industry and in the investment industry over the past 10 years. But not many people know that uh, when I was a student uh, in the high school, like yourselves, I was part of the, uh, I was a member of the national team uh, for the International Physics Olympiad. So for the, uh, when I was in high school, uh, three times in 2001, 2002, and 2003, I was proud to represent my country in the International Physics Olympiad. And I remember this year when we were preparing for the Olympiad, uh, to, for the organizing of the International Economics Olympiad, I, I remember that in the year of 2003, we also had the pandemic, uh, the SARS disease. And because of that, I had to miss uh, one of the Olympiad, uh, the Asian Physics Olympiad, for which I really hardly prepared for. Luckily, uh, a few months after that, uh, I was able to attend the International Physics Olympiad, uh, was able to win a silver medal. And because of that, I was able to apply to the university of my dream, uh, California Institute of Technology, and I was able to study there in the California uh, 
United States. And uh, I think this story uh, brings me uh, a lot of emotions because uh, things happen in life. Uh, a lot of things are not under our control, but I was happy that uh, at those times, organizers were able to organize Olympia and gave me an opportunity for my future. And I would like to congratulate and salute all the, uh, all the members of the organizing committee, academic committee, the president of International Economics Olympiad, all the sponsors and everybody who took part. And also I would like to congratulate yourselves, your team leaders, your national uh, organizers uh, of the uh, uh, local economic Olympiad, because this year it was an unprecedented year and uh, we did a really great job. And I'd like to congratulate all of us that we actually made it happen. And lastly, a few words about ASNA International Financial Center. Just now you saw a video a movie about uh, what we do and what kind of services we offer, our ambition and our vision and our goals that we set in front of us. But to speak the truth, when people ask me, what is AIFC? What is AIFC all about? I always tell them that AIFC is not just a financial center. It's not a building. It's actually a thousands of people brought together who are working to improve the financial industry of Kazakhstan and working hard to improve the investment landscape of the country. So well, that's what we do. And we're very happy uh, to be a part of this initiative. We really truly care about human capital development, not only within the financial center, but we also support uh, many different initiatives, uh, starting from the high school initiatives, university uh, initiatives. And also we have a Bureau for Continuing Professional Development, which helps elders, uh, adults, to continually grow their professional skills and to improve themselves. Because we really believe in the people and we think that people uh, uh, change the world around them. And that's what I would like to wish to you. Uh, I would like to wish to you to have a great experience during this International Economics Olympiad. I would like you all to meet each other and to expand and widen your networks and to, and to increase the number of your international friends, to exchange contacts and stay in touch with each other. Because for myself, I still keep in touch with the people I met 20 years ago during the International Physics Olympiad, and we're still good friends. So that's what I would like to wish to you, to have a great experience and to be brave, to, be, uh, to learn a lot of interesting things, to actually have a dream uh, during this Olympiad and to make it happen uh, over the next 10, 20 years. Thank you very much, and again, on behalf of Kazakhstan and the city of Nur-Sultan and Asana International Financial Center, welcome. Thank you very much, uh, Yernur. Thank you for your inspirational speech. You, uh, as yourself, is a great example that all goals is, uh, are reachable. And this Olympiad is a great way to achieve uh, anything you want. Thank you very much for your example, for your history and your biography. And I wish you to find maybe some new friends with whom you will in touch a long, long years more. Thank you very much, Yernur. See you uh, in, uh, meanwhile, our conference and our Olympiad uh, will proceed and before we can continue our opening ceremony and meet the team of this year, let me remind you about our test. Now it is on its fourth question. We have some answers and we have some, uh, some results already, but of course we have to wait uh, till the end of this test and right now we have a fourth question about animals and animals of Kazakhstan. There is a fox of, of quite compact size that inhabits the steppes and semi-deserts of Kazakhstan. What is the name of this creature? Fennec, Korsak, White Fox, probably, or Maikung? You could choose any option, just one option, uh, uh, which you think absolutely correct. If you sure, just mark this uh, and choose uh, this option. If you're thinking about, just try to ask your friends, your colleagues, and uh, pick the right answer up. So now it's time to meet the participants of the Olympiad. We have an impressive number of contestants, which grow steadily from year to year. And 2020, there are 29 teams from different places all over the globe, from Mexico to New Zealand. Each of the teams has prepared a short video greeting and uh, let's start watching what they have made for us. Please welcome.
Hi. 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 We are Team Canada. Hello, I'm Zed, and I like the night sky. Hi, my name's Theo, I'm from Canada, and I like to read. Hi, I'm Andy, and I like fashion. Hi, my name is Richard Yang, and I enjoy playing piano. I'm Kevin, and I enjoy studying econ. The key to victory is learning economics. Sveiki. I'm Carlos, and my students are smarter than me. I'm Martin, and I love crunching numbers. My name is Daniels, and I like feeding pigeons. I'm Edwards, and I'm fascinated by copyright law. My name is Emils, and I listen to North Korean music. Hi, my name is Christophers, and I love debating. I'm Roberts, and I like moving in slow motion. The key, the key to, to victory, victory is a hefty monetary, monetary stimulus. stimulus. Hello, we're in Team USA. Hi, my name's Van Prime, and I'm the coach of Team USA. I'm a teacher in Ellicott City, Maryland at Mount Hebron High School, where I teach micro and macroeconomics, art history, and European history. Hi, my name is Nick Snyder, and I have two pet dogs. My name's Sudarsan, and I love to play the bass. And the key to victory is getting the answers right. My name is Lochana. I love cricket. Oh, my name is Lochita and I'm 15 years old. I am Sashwa and I am a traditional dancer. Hello, my name is Shashi and I enjoy playing the piano. So I'm Lutfi, I very like corn soup. Hello, I'm Liska, I love to collect kawaii. Hello everybody, I'm Zaki and I like listening a ballad song. Hello guys, my name is Koran and I love to tell funny jokes. The key to victory is... Oh, is... Oh, is... Oh, is... Привет, сябры! We are a team from Belarus. My name is Anya and I like to play the guitar. Hi, I'm Nikita and my passion is game design. Hi, my name is Dmitri and I like economics. My name is Andrew and I'm interested in graphic design. I'm Sophie and I'm fond of art. And our team thinks that the key to victory is knowledge and handworking. Sziasztok! Hi, my name is Betty and I really like trying out different cuisines. My name is Adam and I like to play football. My name is David and I like to travel. I'm Nori and I like ski. I'm Jofi and I know the first 50 digits of pi. The key to victory is practice. Hello, I'm Martin, and I've already founded my first startup. Hi, I'm Alex, and I'm international. My name is Anja, and I am a party girl. <laughs> I'm Karina, and I am the creative one. Hi, my name is Ines, and I like to play volleyball. Our key to victory is... Fun, teamwork, and widen our horizon. <laughs> Достар, барлықтарына сәлем. Бұл Қазақстан Республикасының ұлттық құрамасы. Мен есімім Арай. Hello, my name is Ayana and I like art. My name is Arai and I like to play tennis. My name is Yarasol and the fact about me is that once I was bitten by a reindeer. I'm Yarasol and I want to fight the moon. Hello everyone, my name is Marcel and I love boxing. Достар, күш неде? Атқуатында. Атқуатында. It's 
so great to see a video. Uh, it was something like a little challenge before the start of Olympiad to connect to each other and make this video and it's absolutely perfect. It was uh, the only first team presentation video. We have two more ahead. And now let me tell you a little about the previous International Economic Olympiads. Uh, the first of them took place in Moscow two years ago uh, when participants uh, from 13 countries gathered in the capital of Russia. The competition uh, resulted is uh, awarding 10 gold, 11 silver and 17 bronze medals. The best total team results was shown by Latvia, the second place went to a team from Russia and the bronze was shared between Brazil and Kazakhstan. One year later, that in July of 2019, the second International Economics Olympiad took place, this time in the beautiful Russian city of St. Petersburg, also known by the, the Northern Venice. Teams from 24 countries were competing for the prizes during the intense week. Finally, the gold went to Brazil and two teams from China collected silver and bronze trophies. This year the competition promises to be even tougher, but that's a good thing. We wish every team as well as each and every participant high scores and great results. And of course we are sure that all the teams will do their best and put the names on their countries and members in the history of I.O. Now, let's get another portion of Teams Video Greetings. I'm Esfar and I want to be the next Warren Buffett from Bangladesh. Hello everyone, I'm Darpan and I'm allergic to chicken. Hi guys, my name is Faraz and a fun fact about me is I like watching old films. Hi guys, I'm Nazif, I'm from Bangladesh and I'm the tallest guy in my class. Hi everyone, I'm Promi and I lived six years in Australia. Hi, my name is Kwan Sok and I like to play petang and basketball. My name is Jun Mo. Economics is my passion. Hello, my name is Yuan Yoon and I like playing the guitar. My name is Seon Che from South Korea and I like watching TV shows. Thank you. The key to victory is cooperation. cooperation. I love visiting and exploring new places. I'm Nista and I like phones. My name is Manan Nathagi and I play basketball. My name is Jivan Thorka and I love writing poems. I am Risa Pandey and I play football. The key to victory is never give up. Persistence. Practice. Matter. Perseverance. Salamat My name is Amir. I am from Kyrgyzstan. My name is Elura and I'm going to win. My name is Saman. I like economics. My name is Sahib. I love learning something new. My name is Leila. I believe in my team. The key of victory is teamwork. Caitlin Quo and I like seeing and reading. Hi, my name is Samuel and I like track and field. Hi, I'm Jonathan. I like robotics and computer science. Hi, I'm Yvette and I like swimming and debate. Hi, my name is Catherine and I like to play the violin. We believe that the key to victory is perseverance. Dzień dobry. Dzień dobry. Hello, my name is Peter and I'm interested in political economy. Hi, I'm Michał and I like windsurfing. My name is Mateusz, I come from Lublin. Hi, my name is Maximilian and I love sailing. My name is Jakub and I like cooking. We in Poland believe that the key to success is... Yeah, Hi, 
area and I like cooking. Science viewers and I like video editing. My name is Alberto, I play the piano. Hello everyone, I'm Helen and I like to travel. I'm Dimitris and I like playing football. The key to victory is work. Team spirit. Persistence. Passion. Hi, my name is Jacob Samuel and I'm the team leader for Team New Zealand for IEO 2020. Fun fact, my football team won the Premier League for the first time in 30 years. I'm Dash Chaudhry. I'm 18 years old. I also enjoy playing squash and debating. Hi everyone, my name is Sanjay and I'm a year 13 student. A fun fact about me, I really love the chocolate milk we get out here. Hi, my name is Abhinav, I'm 17 years old. An interesting fact about me is that this will be my second year at the International Economics Olympiad and I'm really excited for what the opportunity will bring. Can't wait for the week to begin. I'm Luke, I'm in my last year at King's College. I'm really looking forward to doing the Olympiad to meet new people and learn some new things and next year I'm looking to do BCom and Law and Law. Hi, my name is Sadra. I'm interested in online trading and fiscal marketing. Hello, my name is Sayyid Mohammad Harman Cheshmi. Uh, I like economy, but I prefer computer, prefer computer science more. Uh, I must say that I like philosophy a little bit. Hello, I'm Melika Shantiri. My hobbies are program writing and listening to music. Hi, my name is Mohammad. I'm interested in mathematics, economics issues and business. We're saying many thanks to teams from this second video uh, and we have another one uh, in a few moments later but right now we're ready to go on. Of course uh, we'd like to uh, step back in our test and our test about Kazakhstan say something tell you something new about history culture nature and other things about Kazakhstan and uh, uh, we're glad to uh, we're glad to see your answers, your response, and uh, your knowledge, of course. In just a minute, we will continue meeting our teams. But before, I challenge you to answer the fifth question of our test about Kazakhstan. This is the last and probably the hardest one. Uh, try to give the right answer, as usual. Uh, uh, so, this, uh, I, try, I ask you to try uh, uh, pay a little bit more attention, because it's probably the hardest question, as, I, as we think, what was the name of a famous poet and philosopher who wrote the fundamentally important treatise called the Book of Words? You could choose one of the four options you have, and of course, you could see the uh, a little bit later the right answer. Of course, we will share you with the right answer and you will realize uh, about your knowledge about Kazakhstan, but I'm sure and I know your knowledge is absolutely brilliant and perfect and we're glad to see it and we're glad to read your answers. Now we are wrapping up and resuming your answers and uh, let's meet some more of the people who are ready to accept the challenges of Olympiad. The last part of our team's video greetings is coming to your screens right now. Доброе утро. Привет. Здравствуйте. Добрый день. Всем привет. Hello. My name is Sasha and my hobby is swimming. My name is Misha. I like playing chess. I'm Anna and I like playing tennis. I'm Sasha. I've been on a TV game show. Hi, I'm Alina and I have very old cat. Our key to the victory is... Unity of the team. Hard work. Devotion and inspiration. Support of friends and family. Believing in your dream. Hi, 
Hi, my name is Ben. I'm from Ireland and I like rugby. Hi, my name is Cora and I like NBA. Hi, I'm Adam McCourt and I like Formula One. Hi, my name is Luca Donovan and I'm interested in economics and policy. Hi, my name is Connor Lennon and I like making music. My name is Phelan Campbell from Team Ireland and my interests include swimming and debating. The key to success is Unity. Unity. Hi, my name is Rishika and I like to paint. Hi, I'm Rishika and I love to play basketball. I'm Gaurav Palod and I believe in a global wealth tax. I am Vishnu, I make rational choices. Hi, I'm Anjali Khosla and I like painting. The key to victory is hard work and hard work and self belief. Bona, bona. Hello, I'm Ilinka, and I really like philosophy. Hello, my name is Tamara, and I love debating. My name is Maria. One of my favorite hobbies is debate, and one of my favorite activities is playing tennis in my free time. Hi everyone, my name is Yorgos and I love poetry. The key to victory is meeting your teammates five days before the competition as half asleep, strangers. 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 Hi guys, my name is Ishan and I love going to the beach. Hi there, my name is Ikaru and I like to jog with friends. My name is Guillermo and I like making things. Hey, I'm you, an artist discovering economics. My name is Eduardo and I enjoy riding my bike. Salve Gurizada, I'm Germano from the Brazilian Economics Olympiad here with our delegation and we believe the key to victory is... Working hard. Enthusiasm. Curiosity. Consistency. Trying every day. My name is Hamidi. I'm the team leader for Malaysia. Hi, my name is Sarah and I love to kayak. Hey guys, I'm Arvin Asultan from Malaysia and I love to be Hello, my name is Brian and this is my second year participating in IO. Hi, I'm Fadila from Malaysia and my favorite food is nasi lemak. Hi, I'm Ryan and I like basketball. The key to victory is preparation. Assalamualaikum. Hi, my name is Shanzen. I love hand paints. Hello, everyone. I'm Shayan from Team Pakistan, and I grow my own feet. Hello. My name is Shahri Arakulam from Team Pakistan. I'm looking forward to meet you all on the Olympiad, and I love parrots. Hi, my name is Nihal Jig. I'm from Team Pakistan, and I love to sketch. Everybody, this is Syed Salim from Team Pakistan, and I love traveling. The key to victory is determination. Determination, I guess. much for all the team that we have seen right now in our third video but uh, it was uh, the last but not the least because we have uh, uh, teams from China, Switzerland and Ghana as well and we saying them uh, hi and I'm sure you will uh, meet them soon on other activities during the IEO so uh, teams please share with us with Olympiad with the pleasure and many thanks to all the team that we have seen right now um, in our, uh, on our free videos. So, of course, we uh, just watching not only uh, screen, but uh, uh, we see a chat activities. Thank you very much for your words in chat, for your uh, wishes, uh, for your uh, hi and uh, other things uh, that you're writing right now. We are reading it, we are feeling it, and it's so, so great. Just try it. Try to share with us, please. If you don't mind, try, try uh, and share with us with uh, your feelings uh, before the start of Olympiad, before the start the main event of Olympiad. 
get what are you feeling right now if you are exciting you are thrilling or maybe some other things you uh, feel right now share with us it's quite interesting uh, and of course don't forget about uh, writing where are you from and why are you right now it's very very interesting because right now we have seen that uh, uh, Olympiad is absolutely international event and now of course we are ready to go on let's thank all the teams for thank all the teams for preparing uh, such inspiring video greetings we appreciate your efforts and now uh, we demonstrate important and detailed information about the format of the Olympiad and its program very important moment of our opening ceremony here is an overview of uh, what we are in 2020 is going to look like. The I.O. 2020 will be held over the next seven days from September 7 to September 13 and everything will happen as if we were all in the same place with the same time zone UTC. The round will be held at 12 p.m. UTC on September 8th, 9th and 11th according to our schedule. Don't forget that in order for the uh, proctoring system to work properly, you need to use the Google Chrome browser. Over the sec seven days, our volunteers, steering committee and central office will constantly be in touch with you. The communication will happen uh, over email, WhatsApp, Discord and Zoom. In case of any changes in program, we will immediately let you know. Your volunteers will explain everything in detail. They will also also send you our schedule to your WhatsApp group if they haven't yet, of course. Uh, attention! Everything is online, so prepare your electronic devices for an intense events program. Now let's check our schedule on the screen. You have already got this picture via email, so I won't comment it right now very specifically just take a look and realize that the next seven days were going to be truly interesting the schedule could change but we will inform you about in time and of course let's not forget about our main source of information the ieo 2020 website 2020.ecolimp.org meanwhile our interactive test about kazakhstan came to an end and we thank everybody who took part in it and checked uh, their knowledge. Let's see what we have learned from a number of questions, and uh, not all of which were simple. To tell the truth, the exact, uh, uh, the exact uh, answers we got, but now we will know. Uh, we will summarize all your answers and we will know uh, who uh, has the best knowledge about Kazakhstan culture, nature and history. So. The first question. The first question was about a year of Al Farabi birth, uh, and now we can see the most popular answer is B, eight seventy, and I'm and I'm glad to tell the truth. I'm absolutely glad to tell you the right answer. That the exact year of Al Farabi's birth is unknown. Still, those of you who choose the number eight seventy as an answer, pick the right one that's the closest you can get to the known fact brilliant answers so great uh the second one the second question what's about the bird it was about the flag of kazakhstan uh of course uh from the one hand on the one hand it was quite a simple question on another hand it was quite tricky let's see uh let's uh check uh your answers and uh, of course uh the uh the second, uh, the second question, uh, we have got uh, the leader, eagle, 71%. So, of course, the correct answer is the eagle. Of course, a symbol of freedom, power, and the flight to, uh, to the future. However, white storks, pelicans, and night herons are also to be found on the territory of the country. Of course. The third one, the biggest city of Kazakhstan. The third biggest city of Kazakhstan. Let's see on the screen and let's watch uh, and check the right answers or not right, probably. It depends. Oh, the difference, it's not so huge. You could see the October 90%. Uh, and uh, the most popular, nevertheless, is Shimkent. Uh, you get this uh, most popular answer and it is located in the south of the country 
and it has a population of more than 1 million citizens? The right answer is Shimkent. You are absolutely right in general. A fresh fact, this year Shimkent serves as the cultural capital of the Commonwealth of Independent States, which is a very honorable role. Now, to the fauna. Let's talk about the nature of Kazakhstan. Mm, let's uh, remind the, uh, the next uh, question, the question about uh, the animals, uh, the, and let's see your answers. What do you think about uh, the, the animal? And the most popular question, the most popular question, let's see it, uh, is the second one, a Corsac. Okay, now I'm ready to conclude that you are absolutely right. The Corsic fox, also known simply as a Corsic, is a creature that inhabits the Kazakh steppes and semi-deserts. This animal slightly changed the color of its fur depending on the season, but looks stylish the whole year. I recommend searching the internet for images of Corsic, and I know you probably do it right now. Uh, it's uh, it's very interesting and they are so, so cute. And finally, the last uh, question uh, was the hardest one, but nevertheless, now we will conclude and we will know your results. Let's see on the screen and uh, let's check uh, your answers. Uh, your answers for the fifth question, for the last one. Uh, this is the, the fourth question we have and the Corsic is the right answer. And in general, more than 63% gave the right answer. And uh, the next question was about a legendary person, very important person in Kazakhstan culture and philosophy, and not only the philosophy and liter literature as well. So let's check the, your answers. What did you answer for the fifth question? Let's check it. So, the most popular answer you gave is answer about Abai Kunan Bayuli. And of course, uh, I'd like to tell, it's a pleasure for me to tell that this is the absolutely right answer. Abai Kunan Bayuli is the name of the man who wrote the Book of Words, an important philosophic treatise that celebrates education, literature, and morality. By the way, uh, three other names in answer in us option are also worth noticing because we uh, propose you uh, the person who was one of the pioneers of the modern Kazakh literature. Uh, the next one was an important folk composer of the 19th century. And uh, another one uh, was regarded as and is regarded as the father of Kazakh ethnography. But your, your answers is abs uh, are absolutely Right, thank you very much uh, for everybody who took part in this uh, challenge and in, con in this contest. If you gave a wrong answers, don't, don't blame yourself, because it's just you add something new and uh, you have uh, new knowledge uh, about Kazakhstan, culture, literature, philosophy, nature, and the uh, flag as well. If, so, uh, the test was uh, pretty hard, but hopefully it gave you a kind of warm up. I'd love to recommend you not to stop here and explore the culture of Kazakhstan deeper in your spare time, but not at the expense of our main goals, of course. There will be a lot of hard questions and easy tasks during the Olympiad, and I wish you all to go through them successfully and gracefully. Now, Let's dig into some of the organizational matters. There is a man who is ready to help us with this. Please welcome Alexander Zhitkovsky, the secretary of the IEO executive. Hello, everyone. Hello, Alexander. We're glad to see you here. Thank Hello. you very much for the great job you did before the Olympiad. And now I'd like to give you the floor. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Alexander Zhitkovsky, secretary of the executive board. I'm working towards making our Olympiad happen to grow. Uh, also, not physically together, although not physically together, I'm sure we still get the same thrill as the largest economics event of the year starts. Welcome to the IO 2020. Our team did their best to break the boundaries of the online format and reach out to you through the miles that separate us. We also tried to make sure that you will not face any technical issues. And if you followed our recommendations, everything should function correctly. In case you still have any troubles, we're always here to help. 
me and the whole I.O. team will support you 24-7. I am optimistic that despite the obstacles of the online format, which I believe we managed to turn into advantages, all participants will acquire new skills and knowledge, show fantastic results at, at the rounds and genuinely enjoy the I.O. 2020. I would also encourage all of you to take active part in our cultural events, as the Olympiad is not only about competing, but also about networking. When I was a student like yourselves, I have rushed through what I should know, what to learn to pass the exams, firstly school, then in the university. I wish someone had helped me to understand that in the race for achieving goals, we shouldn't forget that the most valuable and long-lasting results come from connecting to people around you. And I can't stress it enough. So I've founded mentor, we've founded mentors and alumni programs. I hope they will help. For the same purpose, we also have started the IOX Forum, based on the projects that can be proposed and conducted by anyone in our community, thus helping us to create value in between ourselves. Also, it will help you to get involved in building and developing strong connections between participating countries, cultures and people. Number of existing projects are related to this goal, like alumni, mentors program, open track and community of economics educators. Those projects are run by project managers and advisors in the IOX and already gave you all some amazing opportunities. All you need to get connected is to come and participate. At the moment, more information can be found on our forum, and we will try to find a better platform for communications next year. If you want to become a part, a part of our most enjoyable and very cozy gatherings, do not hesitate to contact me directly or write to our official email address. I would also like to remind you that one part of the Olympiad, our web-based financial literacy game, has always been online. This year, my personal goal was to make it a realistic tool of learning personal finance management that not only operates numbers, but also reflects people's goals, imperfection of stock mar market information, risks of gambling. As you have already played the demo version of the game, I would be most grateful for your feedback that would enable us to improve the game even further. So, I wish you all to surpass yourselves on the days of contest, to show your best, have a fair and worthy opponents in competition. And good luck. Thank you. And good luck to you, Alexander. Thank for all you did before the, and for the start of Olympiad. And I wish you good luck for all the seven days of Olympiad. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, of course, we are going on. And uh, now we have another one of the most important moments, probably, in our solemn ceremony. And I would like to give the floor to Daniel Fedorovich. Daniel, hello again. Hello again. Uh, Daniel, before we start, before we go, uh, I, 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 I want to ask you something. Something about preparation, because you did a great job, but it was something new for you. It was something like absolutely. a challenge for your team. And uh, I, 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 I'm absolutely sure that all the participants uh, maybe want to know some details of preparation. What about the headquarters? Is there somewhere, if, if it exists, where is it? What about the staff, the people who are organized, who prepare the Olympic, Olympiad? Uh, they are working from home or from the office mm -hmm. or another staff. It's quite interesting in new reality. Well, yes, actually it is interesting because the host country of this world of this year's International Economics Olympiad is Kazakhstan and our partner Astana International Financial Center they work from Kazakhstan so they have the office there but the founding country of IO is Russia so we have an office in Moscow as well so we will work closely uh, spiritually but it will be distant uh, cooperation in terms of uh, the physical presence. So there are two headquarters, they will work every day, and our members of jury are also all, all over the world. And our members of executive board and international board, they are all over the world. So we will be working closely together spiritually, but uh, at large distances. So it sounds mm -hmm. absolutely mm -hmm. great. It sounds absolutely new for the, absolutely. For the committee mm -hmm. and for the history of Olympiad. But now, Daniel, I'd like to give you the floor because you have uh, something special. You have a special mission for our participants. Yeah, uh, indeed. It, IO is a relatively young project. It's only the third edition of IO. But we already have traditions. And I'm very glad that we have a very good tradition which uh, started on the first IO. 
uh, in 2018 in Moscow. And I would like to continue because this is a very important thing to do before the Olympia, to make sure that we are all on the same page, to make sure that everyone who has gathered together uh, at least virtually this time, uh, have the same mission and have the same, same understanding of what is going to happen. So these are the oaths. There will be three oaths as usual, one from a member of the jury, uh, another one from a team leader, and finally, um, maybe most importantly, from a contestant. And now I would like to give the floor for the oath uh, on behalf of the jury to the president of our jury this year, and I'm very happy that he is with us for the third time already. Uh, this is Yanis Priede from uh, Latvia. Professor Priede, please, the floor is yours. All right, so uh, hello, everyone. Uh, Daniel, thank you very much for, for giving me this floor. I'm really very, very happy, uh, you know, to welcome you, everyone here at, uh, at the Olympiad of Economics, International Olympiad. And um, I'm also very proud and also very honored to be in this project for, for the third year and uh, being a judge at this project. And I really, really like the ambition of this because, you know, we're all very, very different. I mean, we're, we have a very impressive geography, right? I mean, where are we coming from? But, uh, you know, there is one key word that is uniting us. And of course, this is the economics. And I, I really enjoy, you know, being in this project and seeing how everyone is in competing here. Uh, but um, at the same time, I, I really would like to express my gratitude to Daniel and all his team for a great effort you're putting into this project. Uh, and I, I really believe that it has been a great success so far. And that's why it's growing. Right. Of course, you know, for the two, first few years, it was, you know, in presence. It had the special atmosphere, you know, meeting all the people from all around the world. And this year, of course, it came with another challenge. But I truly believe that all the hard work you're putting into this project will pay off. So and I believe that uh, right now I should uh, do the, uh, the judge oath. Right. And um, so the judge oath. In the name of all the judges and the officials, I promise that we shall officiate in the International Economics Olympiad with the complete imper uh, imperiality, uh, respecting fairness, abiding by the rules, and trying to build the Olympiad's good reputation. And at least, you know, um, as Daniel said, this is my third year, and in first few years, I really saw that all the judges involved in this project are really doing all our best to make sure that we're following the fair rules of the game and everyone has a fair approach to this project. So I wish everyone all the best. And I guess um, the main thing is I, I wish that everyone shows their best what they can do in this Olympia. So good luck to everyone. Thank you very much, Yanis. Thank you. Uh, and now, on behalf of team leaders, um, I want to give the floor to our colleague Alexander Spitzer from Austria. Hello, Alexander. Very uh, nice hello, to meet you again. Dobry den. Alexander is for the third time with us as well. So uh, now the floor is yours, Alexander, for the oath. Thank you so much, Daniil. It's a big, big honor to be here for the third time to represent uh, the, Austrian, the Austrian team as team leader, and also in this special occasion here, to represent the team leaders of all nations, of all 30 nations. Uh, I want to thank everybody who uh, really, really put so much effort into building up this great platform, into building uh, all, the, all, the, all the media things in, in, in the background. You know, this is so much work and I really appreciate it. So thank you so much on behalf of all the team leaders. And I think it is time for the team leaders of. So in the name of all the coaches and other members of the athletes entourage, I promise that we shall commit ourselves to ensuring that the spirit of fair play is fully adhered to and upheld in accordance with the rules of the Olympiad. I want to thank everybody. And most important, let's rock this IO 2020 together. Cool. Thank you very much, Alexander. Uh, and now, finally, uh, on behalf of 
the contestants. I would like to give the floor to uh, a contestant who is for the second time with us. And last year in St. Petersburg, the Olympiad ended with the triumph of the Brazilian team. And uh, the person who will give the oath on behalf of the contestant was on this team and actually has won the gold medal last year. So please welcome Guillermo Coutrim Costa. Thank you, Daniel. I'm delighted to be uh, participating again in this International Economics Olympiad. It's really, it was a very delightful experience for me last year, and hopefully it will be the same for every contestant this year. As the other people here have said, I'd like to thank, thank you, everyone that has helped organize and make this Olympiad special, make it what it is right now. But now, without further ado, I would like to swear the contestants off. In the name of all contestants, I promise that we shall take part in the International Economics Olympiad, respecting and abiding by the rules that govern it, committing ourselves to a fair competition for the glory of science and the honor of our teams. Again, I'd like to thank everyone that has helped organize this event and hopefully it will be a great event for every one of us. Thank you, Guillermo, and thank everyone for coming today. So uh, at this moment, now when all the oaths are given, I would like to declare the International Economics Olympiad 2020 that is the third edition of the International Economics Olympiad, open. Olympiad is really happening now it's official we hope you have enjoyed the opening ceremony and got even more inspired than you were one hour ago uh, inspired here in our studio not so crowded we felt your support and the great atmosphere from the different countries different part of the globe thank you very much for your activities for your chat for your messages uh, for your answers it was absolutely brilliant brilliant and of course uh, just in case, the IAO 2020 will be held over the next seven days, from September 7 to September 13, and everything will happen as if we were all at the same place with the same time zone. UTC, very important, the round will be held at 12 p.m. UTC on September 8, 9th and 11th, according to our schedule. Don't forget that in order for the proctoring system to work properly, uh, you need to use the Google Chrome browser. Over the next week, our volunteer steering committee and central office will constantly be in touch with you. The communication will happen over email, WhatsApp, Discord and Zoom. Our volunteers will explain everything in detail. They will also send you our schedule in your WhatsApp groups if they haven't yet. And of course, let's not forget about our main source of information, the IEO 2020 website, 2020.ecolimp.org. Now uh, we have some time to, for preparing ourselves for the big surprise that I was announcing earlier. Uh, believe it or not, uh, we have less than 40 minutes uh, till the uh, next, uh, our next special guest, uh, we had talked about uh, this lecture before on this very screen, a professor at Harvard University and the laureate of the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences. Eric Maskin is going to give us a lecture. It, it is entitled On Blockchain, Its Advantages and Drawbacks. Do not leave, enjoy. We have less than 40 minutes till the start of the lecture. And of course, stay in, stay in, uh, stay in touch with us. Just writing, uh, keep writing in chat, uh, posting your messages. We feel your support and they, it's very interesting. Where are you from? What are you thinking about our opening ceremony? Why are you thinking about our Olympiad? And don't forget that you could option uh, to answer the question to Eric. Meanwhile, he will uh, tell you his lecture and he will, in the, in the final part of his uh, speech and his lecture, he will uh, he will uh, uh, have a time uh, to respond or not maybe probably for all your questions but the general part he will try to do we, he will uh, have uh, some minutes for the answering for your question just to be open be active and answer all your questions to the absolutely legendary le uh, lecture uh, that we will have in uh, less than 40 minutes so uh, at 
at 2 p.m. UTC we will uh, uh, we will meet again with our lecture and uh, with your questions uh, and new information and new knowledge we prepared for you. Thank you very much for your attention. See you and stay in tune, stay in touch, stay in chat.
now it's uh, the time for the big surprise that I was announcing earlier. And before we go, uh, just information to you. Uh, according to previous years, the information from lecture could be useful for you in some Olympiad task. Maybe this year the situation will be the same, maybe not, we don't know. But right now, I'm glad to give the floor a professor at Harvard University at the laureate of the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Science, Eric Maskin. Eric, great to see you, great to hear you. Please welcome Eric. Thanks so much. Uh, it's, it's good to be with you. And I'd like to uh, take this opportunity to speak about a, a topic which, um, which I think is quite interesting in the uh, technologically savvy times we live in, and that is a blockchain, its, uh, its benefits uh, and its drawbacks. Let me um, let me start with some of the benefits, some some of the uh, pluses of blockchain. Uh, I'm actually very positive about the technology itself because it allows people to transfer money very easily and securely uh, and quickly. Uh, from one point in the world to another. You don't need an intermediary. You don't need to know anything about the person that you're transacting with. You don't have to know his identity. You don't have to trust him. Uh, and the record of the transaction uh, is secure. Uh, that is, uh, that's a lot that we're getting out of the technology. And the fact that transactions can be anonymous is one step further in the development of markets. We, we got markets in the first place because they made exchange possible between people who don't know each other very well. If you go to the supermarket to buy food, you don't have to know the people in the supermarkets uh, very well at all in order to transact with them. It, before markets, you had to know the people you were dealing with uh, quite well. Blockchain takes anonymity one step further. You don't even have to know where the other people are. Uh, and as I say, that there are some great advantages to this. Uh, blockchain can be used for many applications. Uh, anytime that you're interested in sending sensitive information, medical records, for example, and send them securely via blockchain. We could imagine setting up elections using blockchain, and this would have the advantage that voters would be able to check whether their vote was registered or not. You could also check to make sure that the official outcome is the actual outcome. Uh, this, this would make elections far more secure than they are now. Blockchain can be used for shipping and logistics. If, if I want to ship my goods from this part of the world to another part of the world, I could use blockchain uh, to determine which ship in the ocean is closest to me and can most uh, efficiently transport those goods. There are many potential applications, uh, very useful applications of blockchain. Um, so I'm very positive about it. As I said, uh, it so happens that the most famous application of blockchain so far has been to crypto, private cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. And there, I would like to express my skepticism. Uh, I am not a supporter of Bitcoin. And let me explain why. 
First of all, uh, it's not clear that Bitcoin brings any benefits that we didn't already have or, or that we couldn't easily develop. Uh, before Bitcoin, Bitcoin came along, of course, we had old-fashioned money, dollars and euros and RMB and rubles and so on. Uh, why do we need another form of money? Well, Bitcoin supporters will say old-fashioned money is not as easy to transfer uh, as Bitcoin is, and, and, and that's certainly true, but there's no reason why old-fashioned money can't be digitized the same way that Bitcoin is, and using something like blockchain technology, we could make the transfer of dollars just as easy and secure as as with Bitcoin. So it's not clear that in principle, Bitcoin is not is providing anything that we couldn't provide with old fashioned money. Furthermore, there are some important ways in which standard money, old fashioned money is better than Bitcoin. First of all, we, we see with all of the new cryptocurrencies that have been created in recent years that there tend to be huge variations in their values, speculative swings. And that means that if you are investing in Bitcoin, you have to have uh, a high tolerance for volatility. This volatility may appeal to, to speculators, but it's not good for society. More importantly, old-fashioned money is liquid in a way that cryptocurrency is not. By liquid, I mean you can use old-fashioned money to buy almost anything you want. You can go into a shop and pay for what the shop has with, with old-fashioned money. Most people won't accept Bitcoin for their goods, and that defeats an important purpose of money, which is to make the exchange of goods easier. Let's imagine a world without money where I have apples and I want to buy some of your oranges. Well, in order for a trade like that to happen, in order to have a trade of apples for oranges, you have to want my apples, uh, we have to have what is called a double coincidence of wants. I have to want your oranges, you have to want my apples. If one of us doesn't want the other's, the other's good, then we won't have trade. Now, money solves that problem because instead of buying your oranges with, with my apples, I can pay for the oranges with money, and you're willing to accept this money because you know that you can use it later on to buy something that you want, even if you don't want apples. Bitcoin moves us back in the direction of old-fashioned primitive barter, where we're just trading goods. So it, it defeats the whole purpose of money unless everyone is willing to accept Bitcoin, which they're not. There's another reason, of course, why uh, you might be willing to accept my dollars for your oranges, and that is that the government, the U.S. government, is backing the dollar. Uh, in fact, if you look at a U.S. Bank note, bank note, it says this note is legal tender or all debts, public and private. That means that the government requires you to take this money for your goods because the government is backing it. There's no similar requirement for Bitcoin, which is, which is private. So, so far I've explained why ordinary money uh, 
has some distinct advantages over private cryptocurrency. Uh, but I want to go a step further and show that having cryptocurrency instead of ordinary public money can actually be harmful. And there, there are two ways in which it can be harmful. First, uh, cryptocurrency gets into, it, it interferes with monetary policy. Let, let, let me explain what, what I mean by that. Uh, in modern economies, governments or their central banks try to conduct what is called counter-cyclical monetary policy. So in other words, when, it, when, it, when the economy is in trouble, when it's struggling, and that of course happens to every economy now and then, the government or the central bank expands the money supply. This makes getting credits easier, and that means that entrepreneurs can carry out more projects and that they'll expand output and they'll expand employment, and this helps bring the economy out of recession. The central bank does just the opposite when the economy is at full employment. When, it, when the economy is doing very well, the government may want to remove some money, remove some liquidity to prevent the economy from overheating or from uh, an inflationary spiral getting started. So the government is always acting through monetary policy against the current circumstances. And... Historically, such policy has been extremely valuable. Uh, probably you are too young to remember the Great Recession of 10 years ago. That was, that was created uh, by a financial crisis in 2008-2009. And it was the most serious recession since the 1930s. But it did not become a Great Depression. And this, this uh, Great Depression was avoided because central banks around the world used counter-cyclical monetary policy to ensure that the recession was not overextended. So we were very lucky to have monetary policy uh, 10 years ago. But cryptocurrency interferes with good monetary policy because if people are using private money, like Bitcoin, rather than public money, like dollars, then the central bank can't have the same effect on the money supply anymore. Central bank can't affect the Bitcoin supply. That's out of its control. And so that may make getting out of recessions more difficult. There's, there's another problem uh, with, with cryptocurrency and that is that it interferes with the banking system. Sometimes it's suggested that cryptocurrency is a great idea because it eliminates the need for banks. People can save their money without banks. They can transfer money uh, without banks. Uh, but that's a very narrow view of banks. A bank is not just a place where you can save or transfer money. The most important role of a bank is to 
evaluates entrepreneurs' projects and make loans to entrepreneurs with good projects. That, that's, that's why we need banks. But let, let, let me explain this in a little bit more detail. Uh, in every economy, there will be lots of entrepreneurs who have ideas for projects, but typically they don't have the funding, the money, to carry out these projects. So they turn to banks, and I'll use the term bank broadly to include, uh, for example, venture capitalists, but they'll, they'll, they'll turn to banks for funding. Banks have money. And furthermore, they have some capacity to evaluate the entrepreneur's ideas. And, and then they will want to invest. They will want to lend money to the good ideas. Now, typically, banks don't have enough money to fund all the idea, all the good ideas they come across. So what banks generally do is to put some of their own money into a loan, but they will also borrow money from other banks uh, to, uh, to invest as well. This is what is called leverage. If, if, if a bank is making a loan where only a fraction of the loan is its own money and the rest it borrows from other banks, we call that a leveraged loan. And, and leverage can be very good for a bank because it it allows the bank to multiply its return. Um, if, a, if a good idea, say, has a 20% return and a bank only puts its own money in, say $100 of its own money in, well, then it's going to get back $120 uh, for a 20% return. But if it's borrowing $900 in addition from other banks, now it's going to get back $1,200, 20% on $1,000. It's $100 of its own money, $900 from other banks. After it repays the $900, it's got uh, an additional uh, $200. So it, now it has a 200% a return. Uh, on on its uh, on its investment, so leverage is a, is is a good idea for banks. It gives them a higher return. It's a good idea for the whole economy because it means that more good ideas can be funded if banks don't have to limit themselves to their own money. But uh, how could this system be replicated? if we didn't have banks? Well, there are two possibilities. Uh, one is that uh, all of the funding takes a crowdfunding form. So entrepreneurs could uh, subscribe to GoFundMe or something like that, and then people uh, could invest money with them. The, the, the problem with crowdfunding is that typically most people who participate are not very good at evaluating ideas. And so uh, if we do everything through crowdfunding, we're going to have a lot of bad investments. Uh, the other alternative is that we could, with cryptocurrency, have new institutions that develop that just like banks, can evaluate projects. But of course, if we have new, the, new institutions that can evaluate projects, they're typically going to want to make leveraged loans just for the same reasons that ordinary banks want to make leveraged loans. But this leverage could get the economy um, into, into trouble, and, and, and here's why. 
so far I've only talked about the good side of leverage. The bad side of leverage is risk, because if if uh, I'm investing in an entrepreneur's idea, that idea may pay off, but it may not. And and uh, typically. Uh, most entrepreneurial ideas um, don't pay off. And if I'm making a leveraged loan to an entrepreneur, that increases the risk. If, if I've put $900 of my own money, i uh, sorry, uh, $900 of my own money, $900 of other people's money into this project, if it doesn't pay off, then I'm not just out my own hundred dollars. I somehow have to repay the other investors nine hundred dollars, and I may not have uh, nine hundred dollars. So, if lending is being done in a leveraged way we can get the whole financial system into trouble because if I can't pay these other lenders back, then they may get into trouble because they can't pay their creditors back. We can have a chain reaction of failures. This is exactly what happens in the 2008-2009 financial crisis. We had a crisis which started in a very small sector of the economy. It was called the subprime mortgage loan sector. But because of leverage, it spread to envelop the entire financial system. The banks making mortgage loans got into trouble. They couldn't repay other banks. Those other banks got into trouble and eventually the whole system got into trouble. Now, in the ordinary banking world, there is a way of controlling leverage through regulation. And since the financial crisis, we have had some important regulation put into place to make sure that that sort of crisis is much less likely to happen again. In the United States, for example, there was the Dodd-Frank Act. In Europe, there were uh, amendments to the Basel rules. But the problem with private cryptocurrency is there's no regulation at all. And so if banks are make, or bank-like institutions are making leveraged loans in the cryptocurrency world, there, there, there's no one there to make sure that we don't have a systemic failure just as we did in 2008, 2009. So, so the, the worry about financial crises is much greater. So let me sum up what I've said. I started talking about blockchain, which I hope I've made clear is a great idea and can be used for many purposes uh, besides cryptocurrency. Uh, the cryptocurrency application itself, I, I think I have um, strenuously expressed my skepticism. About. I, I, I do not think that that is the best application of blockchain. So, so here is the, the future that I would like to see. I, I would like to see a future in which money created by the government is the, is the money that we continue to use primarily. It could be digital. It could, it could take a cryptocurrency form. And I suspect it. most money will be digital in the coming years. I, I, I think cash is, is almost certainly going to die out 
uh, in, the, in the next 10 years or so. Uh, if private cryptocurrency survives, it, I suspect, or I would like to see it play uh, only a small role. Uh, I would like to see government continue to be able to use monetary policy to fight recessions. That it's a valuable tool. I would like to see some kind of bank-like institution continue to evaluate and lend money to projects and for those banks to be adequately regulated and making all of these transactions possible, that is behind the scenes, uh, there will be blockchain, which will make transactions easy, secure, and fast. Thanks very much for listening. Thank you very much uh, for your lecture. And of course, we, uh, we have a lot of questions, actually. And uh, we have a, a not, not so many time, but uh, I try to read as much as we can. So uh, I got a question. Uh, do you, uh, Mr. Moskin, do you think a government should impose restrictions on cryptocurrencies? If so, how would, web, uh, how would that be possible? And the second question about uh, the restrictions, what would those restrictions possibly look like also? So the, the short answer to that question is, at this point, I don't think cryptocurrency is an important enough part of the economy. It's not interfering sufficiently with the economy that we need to worry about uh, regulation yet. Uh, but should that change? Uh, should it threaten to interfere with monetary policy? Uh, then uh, then I think indeed uh, regulation may be necessary. Uh, and, and one form that regulation could take is an absolute limit on how much cryptocurrency can be circulating. Uh, but in fact, um, I'm optimistic that crypto, private cryptocurrency may die out uh, without the need to regulate. Uh, and the reason is that so many governments around the world are now, in effect, creating their own cryptocurrencies, their own digitized currencies, which, um, which in many ways are better than the, than the, than the private currencies. Um, if, if there's a digitized dollar, for example, I can, I can transfer that around the world easily and securely, and I don't have to worry about the volatility that something like Bitcoin is up against. So for most people, using digitized government currency will be a far better alternative uh, than Bitcoin. And, and that means that uh, there, there is a, a reasonable chance that Bitcoin will die out uh, through natural forces without the need for regulation. Uh, thank you very much and thanks for this question to Switzerland team. Thank you. And another one question. What do you think? Will blockchain be sustainable enough to support a large network of people on a global scale? Won't there be limits on scalability? I don't see, uh, in principle, limits on, on scalability. Um, the, the, the technology is, is, is pretty flexible. Uh, in fact, there are advantages. Uh, blockchain actually works better, in a sense, the more people there are. And that's because 
um, one of the one of the sec one one of the security features of blockchain is that you have the same piece of information on many different people's computers. So it be and the more people there are, the more times this information is replicated. So it's it's very diff it's very difficult to um, to falsify information in a in a blockchain world. Uh, the more people there are, the more secure the system is from fraudulent information. Much. It was a question from uh, South Korea. Thank you very much for your question and for your attendance. And another one from Romania. Uh, I would also like to address a question, Professor Maskin. What preemptive measures could be implemented in order to mitigate the risk of money laundering through corrupt, uh, cryptocurrency? Well, the, I think the, the best... Uh, the, the best defense against monetary uh, against uh, monetary laundering is is not to have private cryptocurrency um, at all, or to have it in in, in very small amounts. Uh, uh, the the question is very much on point, which is that so far. Uh, Illegal transactions seem to have been a significant fraction of all uh, cryptocurrency transactions because the anonymity, which can be so valuable uh, from a market standpoint, also makes uh, illegal trading easier. Uh, But I, you know, I expect uh, that the uh, money laundering will go away uh, once cryptocurrencies, private cryptocurrencies, uh, start to go away. If if people are using uh, public money as cryptocurrency, di digitized dollars or digitized rubles or whatever, uh, then it's easier for the uh, government to keep track of, of this money because after all, they created it themselves. Uh, they, they can ensure, you know, they, can, they can implant a tracker to see uh, where the money goes at, to make sure that it's not being used for for illegal purposes. So uh, the natural evolution away from private money and back to public money, I think, will take care of the money laundering problem uh, in the longer term. One question from Mexico. What do you think about the fact that many people favor cryptocurrencies because they are not backed by governments, i.e., they think that this makes the currency more secure? What do you think about it? Uh, actually, just the opposite. Uh, of course, there are some governments that are irresponsible when it comes to money and you can't you can't trust them not not to depreciate the currency or to inflate the currency but most uh, in in most parts of the world governments are responsible uh, you you can you can trust mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. the united states is not suddenly going to uh, inflate the dollar. You can trust that the European Monetary Union is not going to suddenly inflate uh, the euro. And so, uh, and furthermore, the government is, 
is backing this money. I, I think that's cause for much greater trust in the system than is possible with Bitcoin, where you, you don't know uh, who has uh, created this money, uh, and you don't, and, and the money is completely, the money supply is completely unresponsive to economic conditions in the same way that the supply of gold is, uh, is uh, unresponsive to economic conditions. If, if uh, we, we were once on a gold standard um, and that led us to huge fluctuations in business cycles. If you look at the 19th century, for example, where money essentially was gold or all money had to be backed by gold or, or silver, uh, the magnitude of the business cycles in the, in the 19th century was far greater than after the central banks of the 20th century, like the Federal Reserve, were created. Uh, I would not like to return to a world with huge business cycles, but that's where we would be headed if, um, if private cryptocurrency took over. And another one question from Brazil. Why do you believe that crowdfunding would lead to worse investments? And what about using blockchain tech as a mechanism for funding public goods, such as Buterin's quadratic funding proposal, if you know what is Buterin's quadratic funding proposal, of course. Sorry, who, who's quadratic public proposal? Buterin's quadratic funding proposal. I, I, I didn't catch that, but... Uh, why am I skeptical about crowdfunding? It, it, it's because uh, most So probably we have lost uh, connection uh, sometimes. And uh, just in case, we would like to uh, say some information again, once again, just to, uh, just to, uh, just to check uh, and uh, let you know all important things, what we have to do. So uh, many thanks to our professor for his lecture, of course. Uh, and uh, I guess uh, Eric is here or not. I'm not sure. Uh, and while we're preparing, Eric, uh, back in a, on air. I just want to say uh, some word about the next event, uh, the next part of uh, Olympiad. Uh, uh, right for the 15 minutes later, we you could uh, take a part in ice breaking games. And uh, keep in, uh, bear in mind that we have some uh, changes in our program and rescheduling the time uh, team leader uh, meeting. And we will let you know when this event will. Uh, will be, and uh, of course, uh, and of course, we would like to say many thanks not only our speakers, not only organizers who took a part here in the studio and online, but uh, many thanks uh, uh, to everyone who uh, watched uh, this uh, uh, translation uh, of, of opening ceremony, who wrote your com commentaries, uh, who took a part in our 
chat and so many wishes, so many warm words. It's uh, very, very, very impressive. Thank you very much for uh, your regards, your wishes, uh, and we uh, really miss you and uh, we're ready to do uh, uh, our best to make next seven days probably the best days maybe in uh, this 2020 year. Uh, so, uh, I'm not sure that Eric is here. Okay, so uh, we will be back in a few moments later when Eric will be back and uh, uh, just uh, want to ask you, keep in touch uh, and uh, don't go out far away from your, uh, from your screens. Thank you. So it's a pity, Professor Eric Maskin uh, is not back uh, uh, in our studio in uh, on the online opening ceremony, but uh, we're in touch, and he, he said and asked to share. Uh, many thanks to all of you who saw this uh, his lecture and who asked uh, him uh, the questions. Thank you very much, from Professor, and we are uh, joining to these uh, uh, wishes and say many thanks to everybody of you. And now that's it with the opening ceremony and. And you could start switching to the ice-breaking games. If you didn't do, please welcome. We are ready to go on with the ice-breaking games. And have a great Olympia. See you.